Hello and welcome to Fertile Forward. I'm Sadie Minkoff with Sage Acupuncture and I am here today with Laura Edoff, who is a yoga therapist. I'm so excited to learn more about this modality. So Laura, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And would you mind just telling us exactly what yoga therapy is? Absolutely. So when we think of yoga in the West, we really connect it, I think, culturally as like yoga classes and yoga as physical exercise. So yoga therapy takes it a step further than that, or maybe a step backward, right? Connecting more to the ancient traditions of of yoga and using a, tool, a variety of tools to support the individual and their sense of health, their sense of well-being. So movement is part of it, but the other tools are breath work, meditation, uh, wellness coaching around the philosophies of yoga um, to reduce suffering and to promote health and well-being. Um, so yoga therapy can work on an individual level, um, really tailoring the practice to what that person needs based on their condition, but also based on their sense of self or their sense of well-being in the moment, um, or work with groups. So the group having a similar condition, and then again, tailoring the practices to what that group needs. Mm, that sounds beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. yeah. So, um, when we think of we think of yoga as an exercise sort of routine, even sometimes, mm -hmm. um, and we think of therapy as talk therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So, are you saying that not only do you do yogic practices like breathing and movement, but there is some talk talking involved as well? There is talking, yes, and that that's a great clarification. Um, so I. I'm not a talk therapist, so it's not going into the, the story or the history of what has happened to the person to maybe get them to where they are. Um, but it does talk about how they're feeling in that present moment and how those feelings maybe affect their quality of life or affect their relationships or their perspective of the world or their situation. And so it can help to tease apart those emotions and those thoughts um, by processing them through an awareness of the body and how they react to various situations. So they can become more skillful through mindfulness of how to reduce their stress or pause before reacting to their more responding. Um, does, that make, does that make sense? It does, yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, th that's it, isn't it? That pause where we then have choice in, exactly. in that moment, and we can have some clarity about what's happening instead right. of just responding. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, so um, talk me through a little bit about what a session might look like. Do you go in and start with yoga, or start with talking, or and then how do you blend them? Mm -hmm. So. Everything starts with an intake. So whether it's a individual or a group session, um, there's an intake process. So I'm learning about the body, I'm learning about the responses to stress, I'm learning about their connection to other people, even maybe like their spiritual connection. Um, so we'll go through the intake so that they have a chance to to tell me more, go into detail if they want to about what, what's going on. And then, and then we sit and we, or we lay down and relax. So spending some time to um, get into the body, to get into the nervous system and regulate the nervous system so they can begin to release tension from the body, begin to kind of put that pause into practice. Um, working then on the breath. So regulating, again, regulating the nervous system. So um, teaching people about the diaphragmatic breathing, which is going to help um, 
get things into a more present state to slow down the heart rate, slow down the respiratory rate, which again, creates more awareness of emotion and thought. Um, and then from there, it can, it can really depend um, whether it's going into postures or it's working more on meditation qualities. And it, this is a conversation. So um, checking in with the person this whole time of, is this working for you? Does this make sense for you? Yes or no. And then if it is, okay, how can we ex expand? If it's not, how can we figure out a different process? Um, and so uh, the feedback is huge. And then also kind of diving into what are you noticing, right? How is this affecting you in this moment? How is, how is your body reacting? What emotions or thoughts are coming up? And how can we redirect maybe to go into more of a sense of safety or, um, or ch change what we need to change? Um, so it is very in individual um, and it can, um, it can look very different for different people, even if they are working through similar conditions. Um, so in a group, it's slightly different than that because they're, um, you know, we can't have as much direct one-on-one -on -one feedback, um, but there's always a check-in. So it's seeing how, how everyone's doing, what they're feeling, what their experience has been. And then the intake part, I'll pause and say the intake part is individual. But then, so there'll be a phone call and a check-in. But then once we're all together in a group, um, then it's, yeah, more of a discussion. People can share as much or as little as they're comfortable with. Um, for me, that's a lot, I'm a holding space really for a lot of it, which is again, kind of the difference of the talk therapy. So I'm not offering advice, I'm not analyzing, but really holding space for what people need to share. And then, and then again, in the group, it's slightly more guided, but then I'm open to any feedback. Um, so people can pause to ask questions or, um, let me know after, like, that didn't work for me. How can I adjust this later on? Um, and really taking time to pause in between to check in. So, yeah, I love that holding space. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so important to, yeah. to do that for other people and to have that um, in our lives. You know, we, mm -hmm. we exactly. have space to heal and see what arises organically, you know, that mm -hmm. has healing potential for us. Right. That's wonderful. So um, I know that you have a master's degree mm -hmm. in yoga therapy um, from the Maryland University of Integrative Health. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm really curious. I didn't know anything like that existed until recently. Mm -hmm. So what is, the, what is the difference between your training and um, a yoga practitioner teacher's training? Yeah. So I, I do have a 200 hour yoga certification um, that I obtained in 2011, graduated 2012. Um, so that's a prereq for this master's program. Then the master's program was an intensive two year program of academic coursework and research and clinical practice um, going into yoga therapy. So going into the physiology, the anatomy, um, the mind body, the brain science, the mind body connection, as well as looking at individual conditions, both physical conditions and mental health conditions, working on case studies and reading a lot of the current research on, on, in yoga and, um, like mind body sciences, integrative health, and how they're helping to heal. Um, and then the, as well as the philosophy of yoga. So reading the traditional texts and seeing how the framework of yoga therapy is, is being taken from those texts, um, really focusing through the whole body. So the, the whole person, so the physical body, the energy, the emotional body, the thought process, and the spiritual spiritual connection. 
Um, so that was like the first year. <laughs> and then the second year was going into more of putting all of that into practice. Um, so the, there was a clinical component where we worked with individuals in the clinic at, at the school. Um, so we were receiving supervision, direct feedback, and then also working in a hospital and acute care setting. So bedside yoga therapy um, mm -hmm. that really distilled all of this science and all of this philosophy into digestible tools that you can use really in a moment of distress when you're in an, a situation like a hospital to find some relief or like a some yeah some relief a uh, moment of pause um and mine i it was intensive so it was like a cohort model two years um the teacher training programs you can kind of take in modules so kind of have it fit your schedule, you know, take it as, as you have time or resources to go in. So it can be a much longer process, perhaps, to get that accreditation. That's, that's um, impressive. I did not realize that it would be so, so in-depth and intense and both academic and experiential, which is, mm -hmm. of course, you know, you have to, to learn the foundation, but then the real learning happens in, in practice. Exactly. So yeah, that's, that's wonderful. So I'm curious how you got interested in this work and what your background is. Sure. So I first started, really started learning about yoga and practicing yoga in 2008. Um, I lived in, or I went to school in Philadelphia, Temple University, and took a like two credit course, you know, like elective course in yoga. And it was a semester long and mostly was like hatha yoga focusing so on the physical postures, but then the teacher implemented some philosophy and had us read, um, I think it was The Tree of Life by BKS Iyengar. So beginning to like introduce the philosophy and it was, it was just an eye-opening experience for me. It really shifted, it like was a paradigm shift for me. Um, and then just grew from okay. there. Yeah. So I know that you've worked in um, many different settings. It sounds like from yoga studios to hospitals um, and corporate situations as well, right? Um, and one of your main areas of focus is fertility work and helping people that are trying to conceive. Yes. So um, I'm very curious what, what that looks like and um, how it's, how you help when people are struggling. Yeah. So I was working in a, an acupuncture clinic um, during grad school my last year. And that was more as like a, a receptionist and a manager than doing yoga therapy there. But I did, so I was meeting a lot of different people and a lot of women who were coming to the clinic for fertility treatment. Um, the clinic specialized, um, yeah, specializes in fertility. Um, and so I was meeting these women who were coming in and you know, very stressed and overwhelmed and kind of fearful and just running around from like appointment to appointment and working full time. And um, so through that, I realized that I had some tools that I felt I could offer these women to put in that pause, right, to help maybe reduce their stress, to get back to their own bodies, because I think when you're going through IVF or these fertility treatments, you lose a bit of autonomy, right? You're really looking to the expertise of the doctors and the acupuncturists and nutritionists, whoever else you're working with, of what you can do to help help you conceive. And it's definitely more, it's definitely more focused on like the psycho-emotional and the support aspects of 
of being a woman and being in this body and dealing with um, this uncertainty and this stress and all of these changes and how you can connect back to yourself regardless of what the outcome is. Mm -hmm. um, and also the social support was really important too because I think a lot of the women, you know, it's something people don't talk about or they're, you know, there's so many social pressures and um, to be with a group of people who understand what you're going through is so powerful. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wanted to hold space for that and to, to give women a chance to find tools that can help them to feel calm and connected to learn from other women who are going through something similar and to create like a, maybe offer like different resources or different perspectives um, for their, their own healing and their own journey. Yeah, that's wonderful. What a wonderful offering that you're giving people to support them. Yeah. So, um, and I did, I just wanted to really clarify because I also heard yoga, you know, at different times in your cycle and to, encourage very specific, you know, hormonal activity or whatever it is um, that the aim of that practice is. But what I'm hearing you say is a little different, that it's much more emphasis on the psycho-emotional and sort of coping with the process overall. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. So nothing I'm saying is like, if you do these poses or these breaths, this is going to give you this outcome in terms of conceiving. Um, but how can you reduce your stress, right? And um, reduce your stress and feel more grounded and more connected to your sense of self. And that being said, when you lower your stress, right? When you're activating your parasympathetic nervous system, it's gonna help balance the endocrine system, right? Your different hormones. And we know that hormones and stress plays a role in having trouble conceiving. So there is a correlation, um, but it's, that's not like the, the focus, right? So it's, it's a support in going through the process, but it's definitely not claiming that if you do these things, con conception will be the outcome. So there is research that shows, again, just circling back, that when you your stress is reduced, your anxiety is reduced, you have a greater sense of well-being, that conception increases, that, or the possibility is there to increase. Um, yeah. yeah, I often think of it just as um, if your overall holistic health is optimized and good, you have the resources to devote to your reproductive system. Exactly, exactly. And the the physical aspect too is I know, you know, some doctors recommend like no physical exercise or really limit physical exercise and yoga is shown to be like low impact and, and helping with circulation as well. So that has also been shown to help with conception. So, yeah. So if people want to learn more about your work or get in touch with you, how do they go about doing that? Yeah, they can find me at my website, likeabirdthatflew.com. And there they can find my email, laura at likeabirdthatflew.com or connect with me through Instagram. Same thing, um, likeabirdthatflew. Great, great. And I know that you are always offering um, group classes as well as your individual work with people. So thank you so much for doing that. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much.